Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Today, I'm going to give you the 411 on breeding ball pythons. You're watching Snake Bites. deep in the ball python breeding season right now and it's always such an exciting time of the year you just never know what you're going to hatch and we have some really exciting projects this year that we're just so geeked to see what's going to happen things like this pastel bongo ball python now the bongo is a new mutation that's co-dominant and there's not very many of them out there and the super bongo is a beautiful animal so breeding this pastel bongo to several really cool females is going to be really exciting to start this project out and we have things like this fire banana pinstripe now of course the banana is a co-dominant mutation but you add the fire and the pinstripe into it and wow that thing glows and we're breeding this animal into a handful of other mutations and maybe getting some five and six bang bananas now that's gonna be really awesome or how about this animal here you know I'm gonna be excited about this one this is a pinstripe scale Head. You can see right on the tip, it's missing some of those scaleless. So you know what I'm going for, a pinstripe scaleless animal. That's right, this male here is breeding the mom to the scaleless babies last year. So with any luck, I'm going to get a pinstripe scaleless ball python later in the season. But hey, you never want to count your chickens before they hatch, right? Or how about this project here? This one's really an exciting new project that you're not seeing too much of. This happens to be a super bamboo ball python. Again, it's just a white snake, so you don't really get the beauty of the bamboo project, but everything this breeds to is going to be bamboo. So we're taking it to a bunch of really cool females. I really am loving the cinnamon bamboos and the pinstripe bamboos, so we definitely have some secrets coming out here. So hopefully this guy will be a father to a handful of clutches, and it's going to be really awesome. And you know, there's a new project, another white snake with a super, but it's a little bit different because it has a lot of purples and yellow in it and it's called a Sahara ball python. Now the normal Sahara ball pythons look almost like a desert ghost and a yellow belly but it's a co-dominant mutation and this happens to be the super form and again this super male is breeding a bunch of stuff so it's going to be a really exciting potential year here at BHP. But let's go ahead and talk about how to breed ball pythons. You really have four things to consider when breeding ball pythons and that's temperature, feeding, copulation and follicles. Let's go ahead and start with temperature. Which country did Brian import the original pinstripe from? A, Togo, B, Ghana, C, Benin. Go ahead and answer down below in the comments and check back later in the show to see if you have the correct answer. In this week's Reptile Report, we'll be highlighting chameleon forums. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. During the off-breeding season, we keep our python room at 85 degrees, both day and night. But as soon as we start breeding, which is in the beginning of November, we drop our daytime highs from 85 down to 83 degrees. Now then we drop our nighttime temperatures down to 76 degrees. So that's 12 hours of 83 degrees and 12 hours of 76 degrees. Now basically the reason we do that is it helps promote the growth of follicles in females and also entices the males to breed those females. Now there's a handful of people out there that keep their daytime and nighttime temperatures at 82 degrees Fahrenheit year round. Now basically there's nothing wrong with that type of breeding, but it does kind of make you have eggs 12 months of the year because you never know when those females are going to produce follicles. When you cool the temperatures like we do, it shortens and condenses the breeding season. But there's also the cycling of the hot spots, so let's go look at that. During the off-breeding season, we keep our hot spots at 95 degrees Fahrenheit both day and night. And those hot spots are in the back of the cage, so the females can still thermoregulate. But you really want to drop those temperatures down a little bit during the breeding season because 95 degrees, believe it or not, can kill fertile sperm in males, and you never want to get in fertile eggs. So what we do is during the breeding season, we put our daytime temperatures down to 88 degrees. Then we actually use 
our night times down to 80 degrees. So 12 hours a day is dropping to 80 degrees on the hot spot, and during the day it goes back up to 88 degrees. That just helps that cycle that you're having with the ambient temperatures as well. But that's only one part of the breeding season. Feeding is another huge part, so let's talk about that. Well, it happens to be feeding day here at BHB. And whether I like it or not, the fact is a lot of my ball python adults eat live food. Now we prefer them to eat frozen, but we want them to feed because feeding is such a huge part of follicle development and eventually egg production. Now you guys know I have a policy that I never feed live rodents on film on Snake Bites TV because hey, we're all animal lovers here and there's no entertainment value in watching a live animal get fed. So that's gonna happen after the camera stop rolling. But feeding is so important, we keep track of it really precisely. As a matter of fact, a female that has produced eggs from the year before has a 50% better chance of producing again the following year if she's eaten more than 20 rats. Now that's pretty significant. The other thing that we've noticed, just like with this female here that seems to be feeding aggressively, the more food that a female takes in, the better chance of faster follicle growth. So basically what I'm saying is that we see a correlation between the amount of rats put into a female to the amount of follicle growth during the breeding season. Now most females will go off of food at 20 to 25 millimeters, but that's going to be for later in the show. Let's go ahead and talk about copulation right now. Copulation is really just a fancy word for snake sex. And with ball pythons, that can last as short as a few hours, as long as three days. Now basically, all you're doing is putting a male that's over 500 grams in with a female that's ready to breed. Now we typically won't breed a female unless she's at least 1,500 grams. But people ask me all the time, what's the process of switching males? And I always say, we'll put a male in with a female overnight. If he's hooked up the next day, as soon as he's unhooked, we'll give him some time off. If he's not, he moves on to the next cage. Five days a week, that male is going to go into different females' cages unless he's breeding. And then we give him the weekend off and give him some food and get ready for the next week. Now, if you want to know what copulation looks like, this is what it looks like right here. Now, this is a lesser bee being bred to a leopard female right here. Now I tell you, that's pretty much as exciting as it gets, but this male may stay hooked up for as much as 12 hours. Now if you're wondering, how many times does that female need to get bred in order to be gravid? That's kind of an answer that can have a lot of different variables, but it all depends on follicle growth. I'm in the camp that copulation can help the growth of follicles because we've seen girls that have been feeding well that have small follicles that have a copulation behind them grow faster than a similar female that hasn't been bred that seems to stall at a certain size. But if you're starting to breed specifically on follicle growth, you really want to start your copulation at 12 millimeters. If you see a visual copulation, you don't have to breed it again until about 22 millimeters, then again at 32 millimeters, and then lastly at about 40 millimeters. Now most ball pythons will ovulate at about 40 to 45 millimeters but it's important if you're breeding for follicles to know exactly what you're looking at so let's go ahead and look at how we check for follicles ultrasound is an oscillating sound pressure wave with a frequency greater than the upper limit of the human hearing range ultrasound is thus not a separate from a normal audible sound based on the differences of physical properties only the fact that humans cannot hear it ultrasound devices are used to detect objects and to measure distances all right, so this is how we ultrasound. Just over halfway down a snake's body, you're gonna come across a really big black mass, and there it is. That's actually its gallbladder. And right after that, see those little round circles? Those are actually follicles. Now you can just freeze the screen and actually measure for it right now. And this is the first measurement and that's the second measurement. You can see this girl is at 10 millimeters follicle, which basically means she's almost ready to breed. Now, not everyone's gonna have an ultrasound machine, so let me go ahead and show you how you can tell if your girl's at 10 or 12 and ready to start breeding. 
Now, if you don't have an ultrasound machine, don't worry, all is not lost. I bred snakes for a lot of years before I had an awesome piece of equipment like that. Let me show you how you can check for follicles and what they're gonna feel like. Now, I always like to put the female right in the cage. And remember, you want her to crawl through your fingers, not you press through. And right about there, you'll start to feel little bumps in there. Now, she's at about 11 to 12 millimeters, so they actually feel like the size of peas at this size. You want to get her bred right now. Now the next breeding cycle that's going to be about 22 millimeters when you palpate her or feel for follicles, they're going to feel a little bigger than a marble, maybe between a marble and a ping pong size ball. Now the next breeding is going to be at the early 30s and it's going to be about the size of a chicken egg. And finally, the last breeding at 40 millimeters is almost going to feel like a python egg. Now a good rule of thumb is that follicles typically grow anywhere from one to three millimeters per week. So if you get a breeding at 12 millimeters, about a month later, you're probably going to be at 22 millimeters. So if you get one breeding per month for the next three to four months, there's a good chance that that snake is going to ovulate. Now the last step is once you see a female over 40 millimeters that's been bred a handful of times, we warm them back up to their normal temperatures, which is 85 degrees both day and night. You'll also start to see that female migrate over to the hot spot and start nesting down. That means she's about to ovulate. Typically within 10 to 14 days of that point, you're gonna see an ovulation. And if you've done everything right, 50 days later, you're gonna get a clutch of eggs. And then there's a 60 day ovulation before beautiful little babies. So good luck and happy breeding. Which country did Brian import the original pinstripe ball python from? If you said C, Benin, you're 100% correct. Good job. Hey guys, Mardi Gras is coming up and around here it seems like Fat Tuesday means you celebrate by eating poop cheese. And I didn't even know until recently that not a lot of people know what those are. They're very popular up here. It's this little pastry, jelly-filled, disgusting, huge, crazy, artery-clogging crap, but it's so good. And I want to know, how do you guys celebrate? Do you go out and get drunk, or do you stay home and do nothing, or do you eat delicious cookies? Leave a comment below and let us know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and this will help you out if you ever decide to give a shot at breeding ball pythons. And as always, throughout the entire breeding season, I'm Facebooking and tweeting some awesome pictures. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites.